in my mind if if you were to look at the accelerator program and ask ourselves the question uh, who the customer is right and and if the customer is the startup and if you look at the program as a product and what should deliver right uh, there are three things that i believe any accelerator program should deliver number one uh, for most of early stage startup funding is a very important criteria uh, right uh, many of them have just raised their friends and family or angel round and uh, they are looking at uh, early stage capital for them to move to the next stage uh, so percentage of startups getting funded as a result of the program is the very key metric uh, at axelor when i look at the data uh, out of the 91 odd startups that have gone through the last five programs about 50% of them have gotten funded uh, or 50% of that would be institutional funding um, um, would love to hear the numbers for the others right that's number one uh, number two is uh, what happens to the growth of the startup right when they come into the program for the most important metric that they track uh, what do you baseline them at and when they exit the program what kind of uh, uh, momentum they exit the program with and whether the multiple is between a 5x and a 10x uh, for any startup and third most importantly startups in early stages are just founders and a few interns are a very core team uh, right so they obviously don't have any kind of uh, uh, support in building out a large team so so what kind of access uh, does the program really bring in terms of customers investors and uh, other founders to talk to right so in my mind i think this would be the three broad uh, success outcomes that any accelerator or incubator should measure themselves on multiple definitions of incubators and accelerators um right and you know i would just clarify because this whatever i'm going to say will apply to some may not apply to everyone right um and i will i, I will be talking mostly about uh, commercial accelerators where they have lps um they invest in companies um and expect to get um some irr and returns from those companies um then there are corporate accelerators which have uh, may do it for strategic purposes may do it for um uh, you know um financial purposes ours was you know in the first bucket where we were um actually although we were part of a corporate corporate and we were funded by a corporate we uh, pretty much thought ourselves as a commercial accelerator and were not uh, you know very strategic and we funded almost uh, companies in in multiple domains and the third you know category i would call is incubators which is um essentially could be part of uh, edu educational institutions and incubators which do not necessarily have a um uh monetary output at the end of the outcome i would say um they don't expect that uh, the expectation is uh it probably creation of uh, uh successful companies and that is those successful companies could be profitable companies may not be scalable companies um and the expectation and outcome could be a uh, creation of jobs for example right and so the matrix i'm going to talk about pretty much aligns well with the commercial accelerators you know would share some thoughts later on around how to measure um an educational institution uh, incubators or or a corporate accelerator uh but there were four you know three large important metrics that we tracked and then there was a fourth metrics uh, which i'll talk about which is primarily a financial metric right uh, one the number of active companies after 9 months to 12 months in the portfolio which are doing any kind of a business the second i think as as uh, vg also mentioned the number of companies that have raised money from investors as well as angel groups is what we tracked um for us the first metric the number is uh, you know around 60 to 75% of the companies uh um were active um are active um and i'm discounting all the companies that we did in the seed series a because they were larger checks i'm talking about only 56 companies and not 74 companies uh that we later you know we funded another 18 to 20 uh, companies later on um then you know the third is the companies also getting acquired or acquired right um acquisition definitely if it's a money acquisition or even for a stock acquisition i would count as a decent outcome which i think great points between you and uh, abhishek I, my experience has been that uh, you need to match the program design with the stage of startup that you are trying to bring in uh, i mean that's the typical evolution i have seen when people say hey you know there's a 
does a uh, fixed program, fixed cohort, and uh, residential works or non-residential works? I think the answer is uh, depends on the stage of the startup that you are playing in, right? So I can I could see that in Microsoft when we started, we started with an early stage startup, and they needed early stage startups are very coachable. They need high touch. They need to see you every day. They have questions all the time. So uh, a residential program works very well. Uh, during that uh, the, during that process, the second thing is uh, if you were to bring in a cohort which is of uh, a, you know no very similar type of you know it may not be competing but in a similar industry there's a lot of uh, peer learning that happens uh, among themselves so they love to be in a group uh, because it kind of they feel comfortable there they crave for a lot of uh, peer group learning they crave for how do I do things right now how do I get to the product market fit and there are some prescriptive paths to that. And like you rightly said, no, we know what doesn't work more than what works, frankly. So at least we can tell these are the things that doesn't work. So go figure out as to what works for you. And so there are lots of uh, you know workshops and lots of founder stories and all of that makes it very important for us to bring them in at least for the three three months because all, after three months they all go back to their offices. Uh, but the three months we felt that residential is important because it's very compressed learning during this process. Mm -hmm.